<laughs> hey guys, my name is Nick Beliveau. Thank you for joining us once again. Today is our second interview today with my man Zilla from ICMTL. Um, so today we're going to, to chat a bit about Zilla's story, your background, yeah. um, what you're planning to do here at IC Montreal. And the goal is, you know, to just have a brief intro into um, your world, into your life and follow you along. Uh, because IC Montreal is essentially an eight-month program for creative or cultural companies or entrepreneurs who want to build their project. Because in the artistic field, it's not always obvious having a successful company and working on your own. So, uh, well, Zola, thanks so much for appreciate being on the show. It. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the invite, man. <laughs> my pleasure. And, um, just a quick story about my background. Um, I'm Haitian Dominican. I grew up uh, when I was young. I grew up in Canada, in New York both at the same time, and I'm integrated into Miami okay. um, through uh, elementary school, high school. And I came back in 2009 to play ball at Concordia. Didn't work out, went back to Miami, and I officially came back in 2012. And I've been here ever since. So uh, for the past five years, a lot of things happened, and for the good. So, cool. so that's just a quick run-up of, <laughs> of my life in like 30 seconds. So, yeah. So the, the, the goal of the show is to highlight entrepreneurship in, yeah. in different forms. So mm. um, maybe explain to us how, well, how you view entrepreneurship and how you find that you fit into that mold. Um, to me, it's very, it's very simple. Um, just like I always wanted to be in control of my life. I always felt like I was an outcast. Um, not in a bad way, but sort of seem in a bad way. I always wanted to not be a follower, but more of a leader. And... Um, as I grew up and made mistakes, made mistakes, but I never gave up. And when I'm talking about mistakes, I'm talking about um, when I first came to Canada, I had this, this camera. I got off a deal and it was a Canon 5D. Never used a camera in my life. And I was thinking about selling it for the full price. And I was like, you know what, man, I could do something with this. And um, I went back to school. I went back to school. I went back to Dawson, graduated from Dawson in 2015 in cinema. And um, I had this big camera and I learned slowly with um, how to integrate that camera. So I got into the film industry, started working on scripts um, and filming events and filming club scenes and working with Montreal blogs and posting on Facebook and doing quick edits. So I kind of learned how to be a, more of a freelancer. And, and um, as I got bigger and bigger with the crew that I was with, uh, we started working on this movie uh, in Toronto with this big actor uh, at the time um, and the project didn't work out um, and at the time I was working I was working at the hospital um, I was freelancing and I was working with this project and when this project didn't work out I kind of got pissed off because I let go of everything you know like because I felt like I was going into the entrepreneur lifestyle but I wasn't chasing my lifestyle I was chasing somebody else's lifestyle even though I had the freedom of doing what I do best in, in that time was writing film and filming at the same time and editing, I was not doing it for my own passion. So when that project failed and I came back to Montreal from Toronto, um, I sat down and I was trying to figure out exactly where I was heading. And I was into coaching basketball, which I was already doing before, but I wasn't really doing it on a serious path. And I started just filming all my games, that my whole process, teaching, coaching, uh, doing fundraisers with the kids, uh, with my team. And when I say kids, these are my kids, but they are, they are my, my team. They are my team. So we started documenting our whole process of the season. And I started getting this feel of documentary, um, getting the love and passion for it, and using that aspect of learning um, from school, learning the whole cinema field, I integrated into something that I love, which is basketball. And I integrate basketball with a lot of things, uh, leadership, uh, teamwork, um, being comfortable under your skin, be able to perform at the highest, not having to worry about everybody else, but you worrying about what's on the field. And I use that as, um, as an aspect of entrepreneurship, just, being, just doing your own thing. Don't have to worry about uh, other people. So I'm in this great program, and thanks, I met you. And um, this program is helping me just build what I want to build. 
And so what is that? What what do you want to build? And what I want to build is, is, is simple. I want to be able to help student athletes, uh, basketball athletes, go on to the next level. And I feel like me coming from Miami and uh, playing basketball and getting scholarship offers, getting noticed um, and getting guided to the right path, I feel like there's a little bit of a lack here in Montreal. And I'm not saying that Montreal is bad or anything like that, like they don't support the athletes, but I just feel like they support more of the hockey, the hockey sports, because it is a hockey town compared to the basketball aspect. And there, there is a lot of talents, especially from what I see from my, especially my current team, which we are number one right now. You guys can follow us. Uh, St. Max High School in the ball. We are number one right now. He's lit on <laughs> Snapchat, so we can yeah, definitely put his definitely. Snapchat in, yeah, the, in the description. Right. Yeah, definitely. I will. You can put it up. I'll give you the information. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I just felt like I'm, I'm getting into these kids' lives like as a second father. And, and um, I've been doing it for four years, and I already have like two, two, two kids of mine. Now they're my brothers, because once you turn 18, you're my brother now. You're not my kid anymore. And I have two kids, right? Uh, two brothers <laughs> right now. Playing, one is playing at Momohasi, and one is playing at Collège uh, Rosemont. One is playing football, and one is playing uh, Division II basketball. And when I go and see them, they always thank me. They always thank me, like, coach, like, you were the best coach, this and that. And I'm using this, I'm like, wow, like, I'm really inspiring these kids on the, another level. And I could turn this into a, a lifestyle, but also to, into a business. And I don't see, um, from my competitors, in which I'm searching right now, I don't see individual work with a personal player or a potential star. I see more of a group, like, I see a lot of lifestyle coaching, uh, but more into groups, like groups of five or like just having kids, like instead of them being in the streets, okay, come to my camp or come to my organization, we'll, we'll do sports, but they're not really focused on that one kid or they're not really focused on that specific talent. And I want to focus on that specific talent. I don't want to focus on, I'm not saying I don't want to focus on, on the, I'm going to focus on everybody, but I know who wants to go on to the next level and I know who has the potential to. There are some that are just doing it for, for the love of the game, but there are some that want to do it for the rest of their lives. And I want to focus more into that aspect and leading them because once I was in that position and I had the chance to, to flourish the way I want, that I expected to flourish, but I didn't have the right leadership and the guidance. So I want to be that connection. I want to go find those scouts. I want to go speak to these uh, organizations, uh, to these schools, um, to uh, my connects that I have in Florida, in New York. Or, so I want to be that connection. So that's where I see that I could go more into the entrepreneur uh, lifestyle, starting something new that I believe I could do in my own way and reaching, uh, reaching out to um, these sources. So, so from your description of it, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I see that as very entrepreneurial since you yeah. want to you know, build your own thing. Would you describe it as a solopreneur where mm. the coaching model is really based around the value you personally are able to deliver? Or do you see a bigger model around mm. that? This is a great question. Um, as of right now, I'm looking at more of a solo entrepreneur. Uh, the reason why is because I don't have the team yet, right? And it's gonna take time for me, like because I put it so because my main focus right now is my basketball team. Like I have them, so I have the full intention, and I don't want to overwhelm myself with too much. So, at a specific time, I do believe that I will need other leaders. I will other I will need other coaches uh, with different experiences, so we could uh, work together and and seek out how we could uh, balance this uh, this this athlete. But as of right now, I feel like what I'm doing with my team, which with my team uh, currently, I have about three players right now that I need to focus on on a superior level. Like that is their job. Basketball is a sport, but these three players, I tell them like, this is your job. Like treat this like a job. Yeah. And uh, right now I need to um, do it from as myself because I, I am building my clientele and my and, and that base. And as within time, I guess I'm giving myself a year within time. Um, I'm, I will be looking for uh, to be partnership, uh, part, looking for partners to be able to work with for this uh, for the near future and see how we could okay. reach more people in the community. So, what's how how do you see um, like your path over the next couple months? Like, if you were to project mm -hmm. yourself um, at the end of this incubation program, and for you guys, the the eight month program starts October tenth yeah. and will end June first. In June first, yes. 
So if we picture ourselves June 1st, 2018, mm. where are you, Zilla? That's a great question. Um, hopefully on vacation, if not working on what I'm doing best. Um, I, I see myself um, in, in, in June already training uh, these specific players for the year, the upcoming year. Uh, I see myself also um, being more connected to these recruiters, um, have, building a relationship, a bond with them. Um, with the experience that I have with this season, hopefully we win a championship, which will have a bigger light. And we will because I have the attitude. But um, I feel like just growing that relationship, staying consistent, um, staying true to my words, and consistently involving. Uh, just making myself much better than I were yesterday. And that's a motive that I have within myself, like be, be a better man than you were yesterday. So cool. definitely tomorrow, I will definitely be better than today. Okay. Yeah. Um, and in achieving that and just yeah. like your general project goals, but also personal goals, mm. what would you say is like your biggest struggle right now or the biggest pain point that's maybe preventing you or hindering your, your growth um, towards that? Uh, I would say time management, definitely time management, because I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. Like? Uh, just life, taking care of my family, uh, friends, uh, wasting time, uh, chilling, um, while I could just be using that time and perfecting my craft a little bit more. I'm not saying that I'm not, but I feel like I could be using that extra two hours a day of just watching videos on YouTube or watching games or just relaxing or talking to my friends or whatever. Um, I feel like I could be using that time and perfecting my craft. So time management will be it. I mean, um, I'm not saying to be a, ro a robot, right? We have to we have to work, we have to live too at the same time too. But um, if if there's one thing, it will be time management. Yeah, and that's something that I'm consistently working on on a daily basis. Um, and it's a tough process, but I see myself evolving from yeah. From uh, 365 days ago, <laughs> which is a year ago, I see myself evolving. So Yeah, balancing time is definitely an issue, and I, I've dealt with that too, but yeah. also like figuring out the priorities you have, right? Exactly. Because that exactly. also plays into it. Uh... Because there are things too that I believe is like, um, we have priorities, we have urgence, and then things in life happen. And when certain things in life happen, tragic situations, you know, you can't... Uh, you gotta step out of that comfort zone that you are in. Yeah. But uh, you have to rebound quick, you know? Like, um, I, in the past few years, like I had, I had dealt with a lot of family deaths and I kind of been slow on a, lo a, a, lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And I've been using that as an excuse, but I shouldn't be using that as an excuse, you know? I, I still gotta move forward. Like I broke my foot two months ago, the doctors told me I can't run until January. And I've been walking and I'm, I'm already running and we're in November, yeah. so. It's just, just keep pushing. Don't let people or don't let situation kind of stop you. I mean, you, you're you not perfect, so you will slow down, but keep finding that motive to keep driving. Use that as motivation, you cool. know, to keep striving. So, yeah. So we only have about five minutes left. So yeah. we'll, um, you know, step it up a notch to, to really go through all the questions. But yeah. um, I want to know from your, your past experience, have you ever had like um, any big failure that, maybe you've learned from and are applying now to do what you're doing now differently or more intelligently? Uh, yeah, uh, one of my biggest failure is in the high school. I, I never took school serious. Um, I was a class, not just a class clown, but I was living this lifestyle in Miami of just being cool and be that guy, be that tough guy. And uh, it, cost, it cost me a lot of scholarships. It cost me my senior year of not even playing any sports because I chose, um, I chose the other side more. I prioritized the other side. I wanted to be cool, I wanted to do this, was my last year. And I lost a lot of things. So um, I used that as fuel because um, I know that once upon a time I was here and now that I'm still here, but I wish at that time I could have been here, especially in what I was focused on at that time, which was basketball. So as of today, I'm using that as uh, a perfect example to to um, to the kids that I'm teaching today, and as for myself, like being that guy at the time and be being able to recover and um, changing myself. So I use that self motivation a lot. 
going through that experience. If I didn't go through that experience, I could probably be going through it right now and it would be the wrong timing. So I appreciate going through that experience at a very young age because now I know what not to do and how to control the situation, which, like I said, not being a follower, be a leader. So at that time, I was being more of a follower, following more of the trend of that specific thing. Now it's like I'm a leader. I'm in control of my path, my destiny. And um, that without that experience, I would not be the per I will not be sitting in front of you right now. So definitely, I'll use that as uh, my biggest failure, but my biggest success at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> was it was it a very like hard period in your life when, when that happened? Or? Yeah, it, it was because um, I isolated myself from the people that I love, um, the people that cared about me, um, and. I don't know why I did that, but it's like, it's like all the opportunities just, just walked away. And I'm just looking at myself and I'm like, are you serious? Like, and I was trying to blame people and blame situations and I couldn't, I just had to point myself. And um, it took me a long time to, uh, to get over it. And um, it took time, but sometimes you need time to reflect on yourself. And I just needed that time of alone, to be alone and to be hurt to recover from that and be able to be a bigger man. And Does it scare you to think about that or going back to that place again? When I think about it, like, it doesn't scare me. It just, it doesn't feel real because I, I, I'm a changed man. So I'm like, like, sometimes I like, Facebook will like remind me of certain pictures from like 2009 or 2008 when I have Facebook since 2008. And I look at certain pictures, I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's me, you know? I mean. How old are you now? 26 now. So at the time I was eight, 17, 18, um, just remembering going to court on my graduation, you know, going to court with my cap and gown and having my mother having to look at me like, are you going to jail or are you going to graduate, you know, so, or are you going to walk on stage? I was going to graduate regardless, but just having that fear, like I remember that fear and it was not, it wasn't cool, but I don't know why at the time it was like, oh, just sorry, it is what it is, you know, but when I think about it, I'm like, what, you know? But I use that, it's just motivating, it's motivating because a lot of people, I know a lot of people that did not make it from there, uh, from the, those specific aspects and I'm just, I'm just cool. Zilla, man. I'm Zilla. <laughs> All right, and now the last question for you, because yeah. I, I, I definitely plan to have you back on and dive in deeper uh, in a couple months. Definitely. But now look at yeah. the camera and tell yourself some advice that you want, like, give My yourself. My old self? No, you're in six months self. In six months. June first. Give yourself some advice so you get there. My advice in six months or eight, uh, six months from now, which will be June first, and I'll be watching it myself, and I hope you guys will be watching too, is continue to strive. Don't make excuses. Keep working hard. Stay positive. Uh, communicate. Um, be open. Just be open to situation opportunities. You never know. You know. Uh, One word. Get, say w one sentence. One sentence. You're saying a lot. Just make it clear, concise, and actionable. Bless, stay blessed, stay humble. Thank you guys, that was Zilla. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on Zilla, Definitely. appreciate Hopefully it. Hopefully next time we have more time. Yeah, man. Definitely, we'll dive in more into my beautiful lifestyle. Awesome. Click like, subscribe, comment if you have questions for him. You'll answer them? Definitely, definitely. Sweet. Follow me at Zilla for Right and follow my man, man. This guy is, this guy is something, definitely. <laughs> All right, see you next time. Bye.